Welcome back to another talking point where we help to teach ordinary people how to become successful investors. Now, the point of what we do is we help you to understand how to use specialized trust and property to create wealth. And one of the biggest misconceptions about property investment is that it's only for older investors or people who have copious amounts of wealth already. So this is definitely not the case, and I'll explain a little bit later and show you how. But for now, we want to be tackling another topic around tax. And in particular, we're going to be talking about value added tax. Now, as South Africans, we are taxed in more ways than you can imagine. So take, for instance, this cup of coffee. Besides paying 15% VAT on the purchase, there's also numerous steps in the whole production process which has been taxed. So for instance, the production of the paper for the cup, the manufacturer paid when they purchased the raw materials from the supplier and the coffee producer then paid tax on the products purchased. The coffee beans as well, they were probably uh, imported, which means they were loaded with additional taxes. And the logistics company that imported the beans, they paid taxes on fuel and machinery and the list goes on. So this means that by the time a consumer purchases a product, it has already been loaded with taxes. And that is before you even swipe your card to make the purchase. So in today's talking point, we're gonna be focusing a little bit more on that and that in the sense of business and business owners and what it means to <coughs> consumers and business owners alike. So to talk a little bit more on this point, I have our accounting specialist, Christo Turan joining me. So Christo, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Damien. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Krista, can you just tell us a little bit about what is VAT exactly and how does one register to be a VAT vendor in case they don't know? Of course. So VAT is an indirect tax on the consumption of goods and services in the economy. Every time you buy a product or pay for a service, you are charged VAT with the exception of certain products and services. In South Africa, VAT is levied at 15%. Now, how does one register to be a VAT vendor? The easiest way is online through your e-filing profile. SARS has a guideline on their webpage to guide you through the steps to register for VAT. If you are unsure about the registration process, I would recommend contacting your accountant as they will know the process a lot better. So, Christo, in your article that you wrote last week, you mentioned that there's a voluntary registration and a compulsory registration. So could you just tell us a little bit more about the difference between the two? Of course. So voluntary registration is when an entity registers for VAT, when the taxable supplies are above 50,000, but less than 1 million in 12 consecutive months. The reason for voluntary registration is that companies usually have a clause in their contracts that they need to work with companies who are also registered for VAT. Thus, entities voluntarily register for VAT to be able to get much larger contracts. Involuntary registration or compulsory registration is when a company's total taxable supply exceeds 1 million in 12 consecutive months. This entity must register for that. And Chris, so just a little bit more on the, as a registered tax vendor, there are obviously different periods or tax periods that you can register for. So you can give us a little bit more detail about what those uh, periods are and how that works. So there's a total of five categories for the tax periods. Category A and B is every two months. Category C is every month. Category D is every six months. And category E is every 12 months. There are certain requirements a company needs to comply with for each category. Like, for example, the category C for the tax period for every month, the requirements for this company is that the company's total value of taxable supplies has exceeded or is likely to exceed 30 million in 12 consecutive months. But most SMEs are registered in category A and category B. That is the even and uneven months. For even months, we calculate the VAT, for example, January and February. February ends on an even month. The VAT payments, however, must be made within the following month. If you pay through e-filing, then you have until the last day of the month to pay the VAT. This means that even months are paid in uneven months and vice versa. 
And why is it, as a business owner, why is that so important to make sure that your suppliers and the companies that you deal with are actually registered VAT vendors? The main reason it is so important to make sure that your suppliers and the companies that you do business with are registered VAT vendors is because then you can claim the input VAT on the expenses you paid for the services or products used in your entity. Otherwise, you won't have any input tax that you can deduct from your output tax. That is why it's better to do business with companies that are also registered for VAT. So then you know you can claim that input tax. Krista, can you just tell us, in your opinion, what is one of the biggest mistakes that the VAT vendors make at the moment? The biggest mistake VAT vendors make is that they see their VAT fund as their own, and some even use the fund to pay for the entity's expenses. VAT funds are not the funds for the entity, but rather belong to the receiver of revenue that needs to be repaid at a later stage. For example, if you want to charge for your services, let's say 10,000 Rand, that 10,000 needs to be VAT excluded, which means the VAT still needs to be added. So you need to charge 11,500 for your service delivered so that you still receive 10,000 Rand. The 1,500 is not your money. It is a part of the VAT control account. The problem I've seen a lot of companies do is that they don't account for that VAT. And then when they have to pay over the VAT to SARS, they don't have the money because they use the VAT charge to pay for other expenses. Fantastic. Krista, thank you so much for your insights and opinion on the topic. And now while VAT isn't necessarily a core aspect of investment in property, it forms part of one of the biggest points of discussion, which is tax. And because of the manner in which we are loaded with taxes and everyday objects, we also try and assist business owners and investors of how they can actually pay less tax legally. And there are actually many ways to do that. So if you'd like to find out more about how you could pay less tax or structure your business and investments in a way that you don't have to spend as much tax as you do, then register for our free online training taking place this weekend. And you can see how we can help you learn how to invest in property with the right structures and the right properties. The link is in the description below. So until next week, we'll see you again. Bye-bye.